Welcome to worship this morning. Thank you for keeping up with your offering. If you're able to, please drop off cans of ravioli and other meat with potat, tuna, mac and cheese, cans of soup, vegetable pasta, or spaghetti sauce to feed the hungry folks. If you're interested in doing worship on Wednesday evening at 7, the login numbers have been emailed to everyone. You can join through Doom by computer or phone. At council meeting on May 17th, it was determined that the first possible day for public worship is August 2nd, but that is only tentative and will depend on the status of the virus in our area at that time. We will talk about it again at council on June 14th. There will be a virtual coffee hour after worship. The link has been emailed and will also be posted after the service ends. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us pray. Holy God, we were created in your image, an image sharing and respect for one another, an image of a dance ever moving, 
other in tune with one another, an image of community with shared blessing and mission. You have given us control over the work of your hand. You have charged us to be fruitful and multiply and make disciples of all nations. Forgive us, O God. We have denied our purpose. We have abused the earth's resources for our own selfish gain, and the consequences wreak havoc upon the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. Forgive us, God. We have defiled your image. We have regarded some of your children as other and beyond the reach of your love and care because their faith in you or their lack of faith is different from our own. Forgive us, God, for we have sinned. God desires to see broken relationship restored. He has heard our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. You are one, O God. You are three. You are majesty and mystery. Make us ever in your image, we pray. Make us one. Make us we. Amen. Good morning. Today, the story that we will be learning about is called Genesis. That story 
talked about how the earth was made by God. Seven days, each day, he did something different to make this world. And on the seventh day, he rested. So God gave us this gift of the earth. So we need to what? Take care. Take care of our earth. When you see garbage, that taking care of our earth, no, you're right, it's not taking care of our earth. It's important to take care. So when we see garbage, what can we do to keep the earth right, clean, 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 clean? So today, I brought a garbage bag. So anytime we see trash, we can pick it up and throw it in here. So look, Eve, you wanna go pick up trash? Lots of trash. Oh. Yeah. Oh, take care of our earth. Yeah, better. That's taking care of because if you see trash and you leave it, it hurts the earth and it hurts the animals, all living things in it. Yeah, dirty. So we throw it away and put it away. Yeah, dirty. So we gotta clean it up and take care of the earth. And that's what Jesus would like us to do. Okay? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for creating this world for us to live and breathe in. Help us take care of our earth and honor you in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now I have, even though we're doing this online in a different way, we're still going to have snacks, hand out, and coloring, okay? Remember, people take care of the earth. And we can color. Thank you. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you, will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints will greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? 
Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. 
the crucifixion of an unarmed, handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many, black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country. But we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen.
unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for a shared world. God of creation, you called everything into being, sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to do waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this in every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom and advocates who work towards justice and often ignored communities. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you create us in your image. Help us to your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Comfort, heal, and nourish all in need, especially we pray for those who are suffering in any way from COVID-19 and all those on our prayer list. The Allen family, Alice, Marion, Judy, Margaret, Sharon, Helen, Edwin and Harriet, Jean, Judy, Joy, Gary, Shirley, Chris, Carol, Jim, Joan, Bill and Jan, Bab, Dennis, Jeremy, Eric, Davy, Mary, and Dolores. Hear it, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of resurrection. We give thanks for the saints of all times in our lives, especially those who have passed the COVID-19. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered in one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth and as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever, amen.
neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, or things present, or things to come, nor power, nor height, or depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, comforter, bless you, and keep you in eternal care. Love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.